August 332 BC. The siege of Tyre is in its seventh month, and still the city stands strong against the powerful Macedonian army and its fearless commander. The man is Alexander the Great, a determined military leader who will stop at nothing to conquer his enemies. The moment he's fighting for is the total submission of the island city of Tyre. The machine he hopes will bring down Tyre's walls is his powerful torsion catapult. They spot a point somewhere on the Egyptian facing side of Tyre where they think they can do some serious damage if they can only bring their heaviest artillery to bear on the wall. Alexander knows the city walls are more vulnerable near the southern harbor, so he quickly forms a plan of attack. Using all of his battle experience and resourcefulness, he stages what he hopes will be the final battle, an all-out assault upon the island. Early on an August morning in 332 BC, the attack begins. The assault is conducted on several fronts, but it's the catapults that prove indispensable. Catapults are placed on the mole, on towers near the mole, and on ships that are surrounding the mole. And these catapults lay down a withering fire of rocks and missiles. Alexander's forces pummel the beleaguered city for hours. Finally, a large breach is made in the southern wall with a shipborne battering ram. Alexander himself, with 2,000 of his best troops, rode in in what is believed to be the first known use in the history of maritime boarding bridges were lowered on the rubble, affording the troops a clear path to the breach. retreat to their last stronghold at the Shrine of Egener. The final battle becomes every man for himself because there's nowhere to escape. There, you can't jump off the walls and swim. You can't fight your way back to the mole, to the mainland. So it's either you're going to have to defeat the Macedonians or you're going to die. Alexander's men are out to avenge the deaths of their fellow warriors. Alexander's troops do not distinguish themselves by their uh, mercy. So there is a considerable slaughter at the moment of entry. Seven to 8,000 actual combatants throw themselves at Alexander. And when it's all said and done, all of the combatants are basically killed or captured. And this population of the entire city, which could have approached 25 to 35,000, is either killed or enslaved. As his men continue to decimate the city, Alexander finally gets his wish. He goes to the temple of Heracles and makes an offering in honor of his victory. It must have been a bizarre sight because the city has been has been ransacked and, and, and destroyed. But they're they're staging a kind of triumphal procession. You now he's doing his sacrifice, wearing all his robes and everything. Shortly after his conquest, Alexander installs a new king of Tyre. Once again, the city is an important trading post and strategic port. But as the years pass, there remains one reminder of Alexander's great battle. The causeway is still there. It has changed the currents around the city of Tyre, marshaled enough people to create an artifact that's still there and changed the face of the landscape, you know, all by muscle power. Alexander the Great goes on to invade Egypt and destroy the Persian Empire. His journey lasts 10 years and covers 11,000 miles, in which he conquers territory as far east as India. By the time he's in his mid-20s, He's gone ahead and busted up the biggest empire in the world around him, and he's on his way out to the edge of nowhere. The only thing that stops him is the fact that his troops won't accompany him any further. They just get completely fed up with this. 
but he wants to just carry on and on and on. He wants to be master of the, of, of the universe. After a harrowing return march from India, Alexander starts planning his next campaign from his new imperial capital, Babylon. There, he is stricken by a sudden deadly fever. He seemed invincible, and yet here he is wasting away. And here come his troops, who literally demand and force their way in. And then they're breaking down into tears as they're walking by. And all he can do is sit there, lie there in bed, maybe raise a finger, maybe you know, a little look of recognition in his eye, and then quietly he passes away. Alexander is 32 years old. The battle strategies he develops more than 2,300 years ago are still taught today. Even his weapons influence future generations of warriors. The catapult was the most dangerous, most expensive, and most important machine on Earth. Few military commanders could even envision a successful campaign without the use of this ancient artillery. There are few men whose mark on history is as enduring as that of Alexander the Great. Alexander's legacy is immense. You can see the influence of Hellenism everywhere that he's gone. He's a legend. And he's a legend not just for the European tradition, he's a legend for the Indo-European tradition, for the entire area that he reached and even beyond. When Alexander uses his catapults to obliterate the walls of Tyre, it's the union of a military mastermind and a devastating new weapon. This convergence revolutionizes the use of artillery and forces fortified cities to radically change the way they defend themselves. The power of man and machine to impact the landscape of history is a force we'll continue to follow on Man, Moment, Machine.